you ever heard anything about the unforgivable sin? The sin that cannot be forgiven. What is this unforgivable sin? And where exactly in the Bible do we find or do we read about this sin? Because Jesus said, that's on Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. On verse number 31, Jesus announced, he stated, Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Now listen to verse number 32. Again, an emphasis of what's said in verse number 31. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And now listen. Either in this age or in the age to come. This is very strong. How can such a sin be unforgivable in this age as well as in the eternal age that is to come? This must be very strong. This must be very scary. But no need to be scared. The Bible is good news. The word of God did not come. It's not there to condemn or intimidate or scare anybody. If you get scared by God's word, it must be that you haven't understood the word of God correctly. Remember, the word of God, the Bible is there to reveal truth and not to hide truth or to confuse anybody. I must admit that a lot of Christians, a lot of Bible readers, including ministers, pastors, prophets, bishops, apostles, they are afraid. They pass by this verse. That's why. Not many ministers want to tackle what's said in this verse. Because it's not simple to explain. In this verse, a lot of people just shun it to say, I don't want anything much to do with that verse. Because it scares them. It also confuses them. I was one of such people. Because many years ago, about over 30 years ago, when I had just come to the Lord, I was young in the Lord. I didn't know much. And there weren't many believers in my village. Because at the time that I received Christ, I had just lost my dad. And there were lots of problems. You know, when you lose the breadwinner in the family. So there were lots of problems. I had gone even into depression, psychological issues, trauma and stuff. And things were not working. And you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking that I was suffering. God was not helping me out. Maybe because I had committed the unforgivable sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And for a year or so, I went to so many other people to assist me. But nobody gave me an answer. I was troubled. And I remember I reached an extent whereby I was tired of condemnation. I was tired of the guilt. I was tired of the situations in, in my life. To the extent that I said a prayer. I know it was out of ignorance, but I told the Lord to say, God, I am convinced that I, might, I may have committed the unforgivable sin. But I want to tell you, God, that I will not stop praying. I will not stop worshiping you. I will not stop preaching, even if you throw me into hell. I'm serious. I told the Lord that. But I thank God that I knew the truth. So what is the unforgivable sin? You know, this issue of the unforgivable sin, which these two verses you know, are talking about, is quite confusing because the rest of the Bible says that God is gracious. We are saved by grace. God is merciful. God's love is unconditional. We don't do anything to earn his love or the salvation. We are saved by grace. How can there be then an unforgivable sin? Context will tell us. You know, context is the principle number one. To make sure that you interpret scriptures correctly. But it also it is also the best tool of unlocking even the most confusing verses in the Bible. So context is key. What happened that prompted Jesus to say this is a strong statement? That's our context. So let's go back to verse number 22. Because that's where it all began. So Matthew chapter 12 verse number 22. The Bible says, A demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus. And Jesus healed him so much that the man immediately spoke. He was dumb before he spoke and he saw. Wow. The man was 
was born blind. And the Bible says on verse 23, and all the people were amazed. And look what they said after being amazed. They said something very, very sensitive. Because they said, can this be the son of David? Meaning the Messiah. Now look at verse 24. But a twist in the story. When the Pharisees, the religious leaders, heard what the people were discussing, that this could be the Messiah, they became jealous. They became annoyed. They become disappointed. And their jealous made them to hate Jesus and bring an accusation. Look at verse number yeah, the, the 24. But, but when the Pharisees heard it, what the people were discussing, they said to those people, Ah, don't even mind Jim. He cannot be the Messiah. So they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this man is casting out demons. What a blasphemy. All right? Now, knowing their thoughts, the Bible says Jesus began to teach them several things. Every kingdom divided against itself is a late west, cannot stand. Now, if I cast out demons, what about your sons? Because people were also casting out demons at that time. So, in whose name are they casting out demons? Because they are going to judge you that what you are saying, you are accusing me of, is impossible. A kingdom cannot arise against itself. The devil is not too stupid to do that. So he was trying to bump some saints into the accusation of these people. But now listen to this. Why were the Pharisees angered by the miracle that Jesus had just performed? Listen to this. Because here is the clue. You know, before the Messiah came, these Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the rabbis, they were teaching the people of Israel. Certain indicators which the Messiah, when he comes, he would perform and manifest. And one of them was that they were teaching people that only the Messiah, because mind you, there were people who were casting out demons even before Jesus came. There were people who were doing healing ministry even before Jesus came. But there were certain exceptional miracles that these Jewish leaders were saying only the Messiah would perform them to indicate that he is God. So one of those messianic signs or miracles these Pharisees were teaching the people about that only the Messiah would perform. Two of them were these two. They were teaching that only the Messiah would open blind eyes. So that was a messianic sign. That's why when Jesus healed this person and he was able to see, the conclusion to Israel was that this is the Messiah according to their own teaching. Even bigger than that, the Pharisees were teaching the people and other Jewish leaders, they were teaching the people that only the Messiah would cast out a mute spirit. Any person who was mute could not speak would only be healed by the Messiah. And there was a reason. Before Jesus came, I told you that people were casting out demons. There were exorcisms. Now, since Jesus came, Christians of today, when they want to cast out demons, we cast those demons out in Jesus' name. So the question is, before Jesus appeared to be the Messiah, in whose name were the people before Jesus casting out demons? They were casting out demons by finding out the name of that demon. And they would cast the demon in, in its own name. So if they've approached a person who they suspected had a demon, they would ask the person. They would interview the person so as to gather the information to know what the name of the demon that was inside the person. That was making him you know, suffer. So it was impossible for you to question a person who could not speak. So because they could not interview such a person. And the person would tell them what he was experiencing in his life. Because he was mute. He couldn't. They concluded that only the Messiah would, would cast out a mute spirit. Because he is God. He doesn't need to ask the demon. He doesn't need to interview the person. In order to know the name of the demon. Actually, the Messiah wouldn't need to cast out the demon. In, it's in the name of the demon. He is God. He has got all the powers to cast out that demon. So that's why these two miracles, two in one miracles, provoked the jealousy of the Pharisees to the extent that Jesus became popular because people had begun to realize that he is the Messiah. So the Pharisees were jealous. So they said, how can we stop this thing from spreading? They developed an accusation to say, don't trust him. He's not the Messiah. He's casting out demons with the power of Beelzebub. What a blasphemy. That's why Jesus now says, on verse number 31 and 32, blasphemy against Jesus, the Son of Man, will be forgiven. 
But blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven in this life or the age to come. Why is this? Is God divided? That if you blaspheme the Father or the Son, Jesus, you are forgiven. You, you'll be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, he says you can't be forgiven. Now, this is the only sin that's unforgivable. And the reason why it's unforgivable, it is not based on God. That he, he can't forgive that. No, God can forgive every sin you can imagine. There is no sin too big for God to forgive and cleanse. But this sin is unforgivable, not based on God's ability or inability. It is based on the person who is supposed to be the beneficiary of the forgiveness. He will reject the forgiveness. So Jesus, what he was talking about was this. In salvation, the Father has a role. Jesus has a role as the Savior. The Father as the loving Father. He draws people to Christ. All right? But the, 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 the final role for somebody to be saved is what is known as the effectual call. The conviction of sin and the effectual call to believe in Christ. That final part of salvation is done by the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was warning the people to say, you can blaspheme the Father. You can blaspheme Jesus Christ. But the Holy Spirit, the one who enters in your spirit, the one who can cause you to be born again, the one who convicts you, if he convicts you, do not reject him. Do not underrate him. Do not despise him. Because if you reject him, there is no way you can be saved. So by not being saved, you cannot be forgiven in this age or the age to come. That's the only unforgivable sin. It is the sin of rejecting the effectual call. Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus, you can see him. The Father, you can see him. But the Holy Spirit works, enters your spirit and works from within. Which means, if you reject the conviction of the Holy Spirit, moving you to believe in Christ, and you reject that, you are beyond redemption. And it's not God's fault. It's your own fault. You're going to be unforgivable, not because God doesn't want to forgive you, but simply because you have rejected even the process of being saved, which God gave you by his grace. Stay blessed.